Hello, everyone. Welcome back Hello. to our channel. And our discussion was Alex once again. Alex honored us with another presence, sharing his experience. We're going to pick his brain a little bit. So, yeah, Alex. The dating brain picker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, well, it's always enriching to bring another person with their perspective because it gives it more depth and everybody wins because we can learn something. So today we have a very interesting topic and this topic is the games that Ukrainian women play. I'll call Alex an expert. Not <laughs> on the games of the women because <laughs> women are women so they will never be like us men and sometimes women don't understand themselves even so how can we men understand them right so uh, this session is over <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry but we have here two sides to speak about mm -hmm. so tell me what you do you want me to declare or expose <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think is a common um, misconception of foreign men when they come to Ukraine? Are Ukrainian women are really that naive and simple and easy? Uh, because sometimes that's what American men think. And then, um, well, they find not the result they want. <laughs> well, uh, uh, to explain you that, I... It, I think it would be interesting to go back a little bit to cultural reasons mm -hmm. about what make the Slavic women make or play the so-called games. Uh, we in Ukraine and in Soviet Union, Slavic women, okay, uh, what is the social uh, status? Here, women they compete with women, not with men. And on the beginning, 14 years ago, when I came here, I had a several cultural shock because at that time I was uh, making 40 years of age. So, and I am an old European guy. So when I came, things were really complicated. And I came without having any kind of marking, bombing on me as it happened to the majority of our audience at this time. Most likely all of you guys are based in the United States and unfortunately the marketing make you believe that Ukrainian women are easier than any other one. Mm -hmm. They are not because they are women. <laughs> so they are difficult any place. But back to the core of the, of the, the case is that in a society where men are men and women are women and they do not want to confuse the roles in the household, women want to be women and men want to be men. So they have completely different tasks on the household. And obviously, if the men have the power and the money and make most of the decisions and the women are happy to follow, they will do everything to make their men the head of the family happy because somehow on a cruel way speaking they live at his expenses somehow they are happy to do that and they are happy to submit themselves to that lifestyle mm -hmm. if he is the man that they really love they respect and see that they are uh, also respected by the men so competition is very high. We can break immediately here. It is not because there are many women. They are 52% of women for 48% of men on uh, age between 20 to 40. So when we go older, obviously the life expectation of men is much lower. So there are more widows. But those widows, none of us want to date them. So <laughs> when the number of women are bigger, means that they are out of the market, a sort of speech for us men foreigners that search for a foreign wife. So when the women compete, 
of course, the rules of the game are very uh, tight and very hard because what these women have the most as the bigger weapon on this competitive world sort of speech is their beauty. So the beauty of any Slavic woman is the best she has to attract the right male, the right husband, the right mm -hmm. head of the family, the right father for the future kids. So they will do many things to captivate the attention of this man. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the beginning, I had uh, several uh, lessons that uh, was that the cultural shock that I told that I felt. I remember once to be on the club and uh, as usual we have tables with women and tables with men and the men are more interested on conversations. Men's talk, guys talk and the women are there on their women's talk. But to reach the moment that the man wants to call attention to the woman and invite the woman to the table and I remember to watch this scene going on and I, it's something that we can see even today. And uh, the men say, hey, you girl, come here, have a drink with us. And this was already at the end of the night. And at the end of the night, uh, it's like nobody's going to find the girl to take out uh, after oh, missing one hour to close the club. But still she accepted and went to the table and stayed there with them. I knew this girl and on the next day I went to her and I put my empirical old man mm, yeah. question. And I asked her, why did you accept to go start a conversation one hour before closing the club with men that were already half drunk? And now listen to this. The reply that I had was, if I would not do it, I would be stupid. <laughs> and my brains at that moment just tied up and I could not decode this. And, and I asked, but why stupid? It's like, why don't you say to him, like, I was here all night and now that the club is going to close, you want to invite me to have a couple of drinks, maybe I get tipsy, maybe I get happy and I go out with you from the club. Mm -hmm. And she looked to me with a very surprised look and said, like, do you think that a woman can go and teach a man? I said, no, it's normal, which teach a man? You just put him on his place. It's no, as I told you, I would be stupid. It's but how stupid? Because see this way, if he invited me, I was the elected one. And if I would, as you say to me, refuse, my other friend girls at the table, any of them would be invited after I refuse and they would accept. And worst comes the lesson. They would call me stupid because I lost the chance. So do you see, guys, the competitive environment that goes on this scenario? So, And this speaks loud and a lot. And this is what is a Slavic woman. They fight for the men no matter what. Of course, they have many tricks. They have many charming, many enchantments because they really have it and they fight for that. That's their main goal in life is to be presentable above the female neighbor and open to captivate the attention of the future household provider, husband, and father of the kids. This is how it works. It may look primitive, but let's think about this. Why we came here? Because back there in old Europe, back there in the United States, women want to be men. They want to make the same as we do. They want to make um, the same money or even more. And here they don't want. But like every other coin have two sides. If you want to have a wife that have the same values as your grandmother, or, or your mother even, those that stay home and take care about the family and the man brings the money in, that has a cost. And that cost is obviously to play the role of the man. Well, I am amazed because I'm starting to forget this stuff. Alex is talking and I'm from Ukraine and listening to this. You are in the United States for long already. Yes.
No, that is very true. I'm forgetting. Uh, I had to actually go back in my memories because when Alex, you start talking, I was like, what is he talking about? I don't like, this is not happening. But actually, can, can, you, can you confess here to us that when you were here, what I'm saying makes sense to you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, especially, I didn't really go to clubs this summer because I just had no interest. Because no, the things, club was an example of social thing. Absolutely, absolutely. And I had times, you know, before uh, moving to US, you know, when I was um, in school and I went out. I'm from Kiev, Ukraine, and th those experiences are somewhere back in my memory. And I actually remember feeling. Uh, some kind of almost pain because I would go to clubs and sometimes it would be a great time. People would just dance and socialize. There would be a lot of foreign men, but it was friendly and flirty. But sometimes I would go to clubs where would be some men that would be perceived as they are wealthy or rich, so to speak. And there would be girls literally um, competing for their attention and it was very unpleasant i've never enjoyed it because i feel that uh i'm sort of old school and i in some way i believe that it's a lot better when men pursuing you uh, than you just naturally because he attracted he, he is choosing you and he is pursuing you and you are not the one desperate try to you know put a bikini on or dance on the table to just grab his attention but it's true that there's so much competition and some women i think they even are uh, overdoing it by being so so desperate but one of the reasons why some women do that is because they see a man as a why did that girl said that i would be stupid because every every man you meet that could be interested in you he's possibly a source of a resource for the future life right it's like mm -hmm. an opportunity. Like every man you meet, especially if he comes out as, as wealthy, it's an opportunity. Uh, sometimes uh, I listen to uh, my clients, uh, um, not only, but people sometimes get scared about expenses and money mm -hmm. related to Ukrainian women. So uh, I, when I coach my clients, I always warn since the very beginning, that because of the reasons that I already explained before, in terms of mindset and cultural habits and goals, uh, we can never dissociate money from any Slavic woman. Because we can be very cool, very nice, very good looking, very muscular guy, but we don't have where to drop that. Unfortunately, she will not choose us. In the case that we will be very rich, but we have no uh, physical attractive qualities for that person, they may bounce because when we are dealing with people that have nothing and someone appear and offer the world, it's very difficult to refuse. So some like old school, as you say that you are, and I believe so, okay. maybe you're really able to say, uh, I'm sorry, but you are really not the kind of man that I dream for myself. But others will bounce and think, maybe I will not get better than this. And this one at least can guarantee, here we go back to the survival mode. They, this one can guarantee my life because you have conditions. And this is the reasons why we walk on the streets here and we can see that ugly guy with a gorgeous woman. Mm -hmm. Why people are going to call her a scammer? She, maybe she is not a scammer. Maybe she is using her arts and enchantments to get what she wants. But on the other hand, the guy is also getting what he wants. So it is an agreement here, right? I'm, I'm not pretty, but I'm rich. You are pretty and you are poor. So we can make a good team. And every case is always a a very distinct case. This is not a standard thing. So these things happen and these women are used to have the men pursuing them. And this is something that I try to help and coach guys is they really admire the guy that take the decisions. They are very, ha very happy to help to achieve something, but they are not very happy to have to build something. 
because that is not their function to True. build something. Okay? It's yes. the guy function. That's how Ukrainian women view it. Yes, that's that's men's function to build. And I feel that you almost can't blame them. Uh, sometimes we are kind of looking down on women that expect, um, you know, men to support them fully and to provide for them. But once again, if you think about it, when you want a feminine wo woman, very often uh, the reason why she's feminine and if she wants to continue being that way is that she doesn't uh, carry the heavy stuff. She's not out there, you know, being the boss and <laughs> she knows everything and is telling you what you need to do uh, but she doesn't split the bill with you either so she kind of gives the power in your hands you're the one you're the boss you're the king and um, she is very often is looking to have the continuation for the family and I think there is a deep instinct for women when they are in that childbirth age and they want to have children, they subconsciously know that they are going to be weak. They're not going to have is it physically weak. In, in terms of, you know, when you're pregnant, some women can work, some women cannot work. They are maybe uh, more vulnerable. And um, when the child is little, Ukrainian women are more tra traditional. They are not like here in the U.S. after three weeks. Uh, the baby goes to the uh, infant newborn daycare and the woman is out working. And first, I didn't know was it good or bad because sometimes with Ukrainian women, they stay home for too long. But that's for another conversation. My main point here is, yes, these women, especially that realize their beauty and count on their appearance because they know it's important for men, they want to get... Uh, so-called benefits for it while they can but also if you want to have a real wife that cooks you know they're doing her thing that is taking pride in being a woman and that will also raise the children herself you know putting her effort staying home waking up at night you know doing breastfeeding all these things they are very hard to combine with some kind of intense career so yeah, but uh, let me uh, add to that that um, I would not consider them weak because let's see this way they do m things that men would not do, and especially when we are talking about foreign men. Okay, I I am father two times. The first time my son is uh, at this time thirty years old and with four months. With he was already with a nanny because mother and father need to go to work. When I had 20 years later, the same experience with my daughter Sophia, and she stayed with the mother three years home because this is what the state gives to any Ukrainian woman mother to stay with the child. And is only paid the first year, the second and the third, the money that the states uh, give is not enough for a couple of days of food for that baby. But still, they all try the best to stay out, to stay out from work and stay with the kids. And this work to take care about the disease of the child, take to the doctor, go out with minus 20 Celsius yeah. with the kid, take to the hospital, go shopping, go back home, clean, iron, put the kid to sleep, all these things that they do and never ask the husband to participate, this have a value that I need to take my head about for them. Because me as a man, the obligation is to arrive home and show the money to make the machine keep on and make mm -hmm. the wife happy to follow up the enthusiasm to live and to give me the life that I have. So it's Thank not, you. and they come from a legacy of very difficult times. People that start from zero more than once, bankruptcies from the state banks and money disappear, and you have now vouchers to go buy bread. And people, they pass these things. They know what is bad life. 
So in our days, with all this uh, internet access that 90% has, there's no poor little girls without uh, a smartphone to use internet. They, 90% of them have it. Of course, and with the foreigners coming each time more, people start to see how the world is outside. And so nobody can deny them the right to um, have the ambition to reach that, the level of the American woman, the level of the uh, European woman, but still they will want to achieve the, the life capacity and welfare that the foreign women have, but still they don't want to give up to be the feminine, supposedly weak woman. Weak because yes. there yes. are things the men do that she will not do. Right. I actually, I totally agree with you. And I didn't, I didn't mean weak as, uh, I think that, you know, motherhood is a, is a, it's a tough, it's just toughest job I've ever taken in my life. And I did a lot. That's a no, tough. I never had the report of a pregnant guy <laughs> giving birth. So. <laughs> right. I mean, that, but by weak, I actually meant weak for working in an office. Like she knows what I meant is when she is somewhere in that time and she has all those hormones and she meets a guy subconsciously i don't think for some women it's even conscious effort they want to feel protected and they want to feel they want to give all 100 percent of focus to a future child so they are weak for the social career you know they don't they do not feel um they do not want to fight the the career even if they had some career before they had they, they, met, they met that special man and they about to have a child. They want to be, usually, they want to be off from the career path and they are vulnerable to the world. So they want, the man would be a source of, um, be a resource for their love, livelihood. So they can have a home, a roof, food in the refrigerator, some money for life. So it's basically a team effort. And it just, uh, sometimes when you talk, it's, it's hard to define everything that everybody really um, understands. But I believe that the power of Ukrainian woman is that she realized uh, the teamwork could be a good uh, solution. Because it's really, when the, the, there is future and children involved, um, I don't know if you agree with that, um, that Ukrainian women see the roles are assigned. It's a teamwork. I take care of this. You don't have to worry about the baby at 1 a.m. at night. But I don't want to have to worry about paying the electricity bill and buying the food I want. Mm -hmm. well, definitely. That is what exactly what I was saying. Yeah. This, uh, the distinguished of the roles on the family home. Uh, everybody likes the 50-50, but there are no 50-50. And when we men want to find the old tradition woman, immediately we are defining that we don't want someone that wants to be like us, right? So, and if we want some, we want to have something that we never had, we will have to do something that you never made. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very true. I've actually was listening, the 10X where we went, there were some speeches we, ha we hadn't uh, participated, obviously. And there was one speech from a wife of Grant Cardone. And she was saying that she was so brainwashed when she was li li uh, living in California, that she's an independent woman. She, she was pretty successful. She was an actress. She had money. She, was, she has her own business. But then when she met Grant, and th th she realized that he wants to build, she actually inspired him to build more and to become better and to... Uh, step into his power to, to the point that she um, told him that I want you to I want to see you being a billionaire I think it would be a big thing in uh, for other people as well and he was uncomfortable and blah 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 but the, the, the thing that she told later was the reason why they had been successful and they have been succeeding is because they become a team player and she throw out of the window the thing, oh, I'm not going to cook for you. I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not a mate, okay? I'm not a servant. And she was saying how she realized that 
uh, sometimes it's important to divide those roles and she wouldn't call him when he has important meetings. She would take care of the kids. And I was thinking how powerful that is to somebody who was already, you know, in that feminism mode to realize if she want to build something great with a man, she has to realize to let him be the beast and her to have his back. Mm, this is the reason why we say that if you want to keep someone close to you, give that person freedom. Mm -hmm. It's the best way to know if that is the right person beside you is to give the person all the freedom and you will see that the person, most of the cases, will respect, appreciate and become more closer because exactly of the freedom that you give to the person. Yes. And it was just really inspiring to see that, you know, in the, of course, not uh, most people don't care of being a millionaire or billionaires or anything like that, but we can all be happy on the level where we are. And I think when the woman wants more from the man, some men take it sort of as offense, but I truly believe when the woman expects you to be amazing, to be a provider, to be happy as you evolve in your career or business, I really think it's beneficial for the man because this way you might be open your full potential. You would never open otherwise because if you would have a lady that pays half of your bills and doing, you know, a lot of things, you might have never stepped into being fully learning what is to be a man, what is to be a provider and your career, you know, might not uh, become let, let, let's let's say that, uh, for example, another cultural thing that we can find here is not uh, difficult that any, I don't say mature men, obviously, but uh, young people between the 18, 20, 25, if they are dating a, a girl, these kids, these guys, they can spend all the salary in one day to impress that woman. And they spoil them, it's true, because they really need to show that they are the strong and have the power to make her happy and give stability. Uh, we, don't, we don't need to go too much further. Just look to the nature, to this world. Normally the males are more pretty than the females. And the competition for the female. Is <coughs> sorry. I wish that would be true. Is over where in the world, so is is something that is in us, and this is why we come and try to find the old times female. But remember, we need to take care about her, because if not, you want an equal, and an equal is no longer a female for you, the alpha male guy. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. Very true. Very true. And I wish, I just want to say, I wish that that would apply to human species that males would be cuter than females. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes, uh, uh, not sometimes, it's quite often even when <laughs> uh, people I, I'm working with and the, we all guys are always have the list of the favorite one and the number one, number two, number three, number four. Of course, the first three positions of the list are the, definitely attached to beauty. Yeah. And then when they come and they meet uh, all of them, uh, normally the, the beauty that are on the pole position go down the list and come up the other one <laughs> that is that, that woman that they found the chemistry, that she's really funny, intelligent, so easygoing, so pleasant to be with her, to talk with her. That woman is really a fascinating woman. And when we say these adjectives about a woman, we start not to look so much to the picture that is her face, right? So this is why the, the positions on the list change. And this is why I always fight that nobody have girlfriends or even fiancé, sometimes I listen to this catastrophic statement that I have a fiancé and they never came here. 
Because till you meet, nothing happened and you don't know who is who, right? I agree. That, that's how I, it happens. And this, uh, this takes me right to, to the point that I would like to our conversation to also go is that in Ukraine, yes, we do have a lot of women that are, they could be top model, top 10, you know, <laughs> in the world. But we also have women that have a lot more to their beauty. Uh, like Alex just mentioned, you know, somebody who is pleasant to talk to, somebody who is feminine in terms of making you feel good and cared for, and also smart and intelligent and compassionate. So, and when you think that you know the person, once again, by their pictures, because you have the image, you think, oh my gosh, this, this woman is, is gorgeous. She must be, you immediately assign her a lot of positive qualities where in fact she might have none of the qualities and mm. then the girl that may maybe wasn't looking as as great on the pictures you might discover that you have chemistry with her in the real life and some ukrainian women are very talented they are both beautiful and smart and kind and educated and all of the above but sometimes uh oftentimes we do not see that when we do not have a common language that is uh, one of the bigger problems that we have on international dating is exactly that it doesn't matter how intelligent i am if i cannot profess and declare what i know how can someone give me value makes sense so yes and of course we we tend to accept as reality what we see but uh, what we see seldom is the reality, you know, and uh, the, the intelligent uh, is, not to, is not to confirm what we already know or what we like, is to understand that what is there is really what is there and not what we want to be there. And this is the problem that we men often do being online looking to these gorgeous pictures. We project on those pictures what we want her to be and we build this image of them and we come here and we already have a mindset. We already have a classified, analyzed and we have already all the characteristics that she has in our mind and we never met her. So, And then comes the fact that she she may be completely different from all this castle that we built on the clouds about her because we could not speak with her before because we don't have the same language. So we build the wife of our dreams on the picture, come here and find another person. Then, and this is, I believe, why it was our conversation today, is uh, where are the tricks that they have? Where are the, the nasty things that we call nasty that, make us feel deceived and uh, lost the quest. But sometimes, many times, we lose the quest because we start the quest already defeated. Because we didn't start one-on-one -on -one with the other person. We start alone with who we know, when we know well who we are, and with the image and an idea projected on the human being 6,000 kilometers away that we believe and we want her to be as we want her to be. And then we come and, oops, what happened? She's not what we wanted. Yes, very true. And it, it, we did a uh, little bit explain on the topic. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, sometimes actually those games are not uh, intentionally games. You just presume things without re really uh, learning about the person. But Ukrainian women do know their power. So I think one of the benefits with having a coach, a matchmaker, or somebody who is assisting you is that when you are in another country, sometimes you cannot appreciate, oh, this person talks like they have very good, they're very articulate, they have very good language, or they are kind when they speak, or uh, they are polite, genuine. You know, one of the attractive, one of the amazing things most ama among the amazing things you can ever find in Ukraine is sometimes you run into a person that is just pure, genuine, 
like most pure human being you've ever seen in your life. We have, I almost feel that we have this division between people that are, you know, kind of smart, street smart. They know what they want. They are very, you know, foxy and not, they're not bad, but they're very also very practical and goal oriented, somewhat like in the West, maybe somewhat, but we have the other kind of women that is just like open and in in Ukraine, they all they often get mistreated because men feel their kindness, they feel they're open, they, they feel how genuine they are. But if you have a translator or the person like a psychologist, a coach, somebody that understands not only the language translation, but somebody who can translate the mentality, sometimes, I don't know if Alex would agree with me or not, but sometimes from talking with a person for five minutes, I can tell that this person is, a, is, is pure. They might not be perfect. They might not be um, y- your, uh, the, the one for you. But some people, when they just open their mouths and the way they express themselves in their native language and the way they react to things, y- you realize that this person is rare be- just because it's, it's just pure, open, and... Um, it's, it, it kind of melts you right away because uh, you don't see that very often. But uh, I agree with you. The, the, the only thing that do not allow us men, foreign men, to understand that have to be with the fact of the, the lack of the language because under time that the men have to come here. Mm-hmm. So this is why it is, it is highly recommended that they have a third person, in this case, as you said, a matchmaker or a dating coach, someone that knows and is experienced on these people and can read between the lines and can shortcut your doubts and clarify your thoughts. Makes sense because you cannot do it. And it's like we. A good uh, experience uh, comes with time. So judgment, to judge someone, a good judgment have to be with a good experience. When you make bad judgments, you win experience later <laughs> because your experience is based on bad judgment. So when we have someone that, for example, on my case, easier for 14 years. I already made all the bad judgments. So what I have to propose to my clients is my experience. Because It's not because they don't have the capacity to have it. They don't have the enemy number one, the time. And in the majority of the cases, they don't have the language to interact and read the person. So sometimes we blame the person just because we are ignorant about what was really the situation or what is the reality of the person. Of course, I will not discard the bad side, the dark side of the force of international dating, that is all the scamming and all the girls that win a lot of money with the scamming and is already an institution making money. Yes. So, <laughs> exist. <laughs> That exists, they are more than we think, unfortunately. But if we are protected with someone that can anticipate those things, I think nobody will have reasons to complain that was scam. Uh, maybe cannot succeed because there's no guarantee that everybody succeeds because it has a matchmaker or a dating coach or a very yep. honest person. Because as we start on the beginning of the conversation, if there are no chemistry, there are no friendship, there are no attraction, there are no... If this doesn't come up, we don't have a wife, so... Yes, I totally agree. There is no guarantees in life. But if you... If detected early, you know, there are some people, you talk with them for five minutes and you already know why they are there. Yes, of course. But uh, both sides make the same mistake. I agree. Make both sides. But uh, sometimes, and this is also sociological reason, see this way, let's think about 
who are these women on these uh, marriage agencies here in Ukraine? N not a big number of them go to the agency because they are desperately, rationally, devotedly trying to find a husband. They go because they are sucked in the system the same way as the men are sucked in the system of online dating by the big companies. So uh, both sides are dragged inside this machine of the online dating internationally, right? So the, there are also a lack of really devoted men. And I could speak a lot about non-devoted badasses that came here. They are non, not only bad women, they are bad men also, like everywhere. But when we are on a country that there is a lack of almost everything, and there someone appears and show a tool that is a dating, international dating, that can bring them an added value that starts to be a good husband with a financial capacity to help her who knows her kids from the first marriage and maybe the mother that is widow and lives with this uh, survival uh, pensions that can go below a hundred dollars a month here we go again money and woman we don't separate the things so these people think that maybe they will strike maybe they will have luck like the men also think maybe i will have luck mm. we always want to have the luck and the problems always happen to the others and never to us but it's not the case right so yeah. Somebody needs to understand with experience to judge somehow who is the real man, who is the real woman, and if they have above all characteristics to be a match. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean bad or her bad. Sometimes both are good, but they still don't match. And when we have a lack of time to make this happen, then it's better we have someone that can help us to understand who is who and also point out the mistakes. And honestly speaking, most of my coaching time is pointing mistakes because I'm not going to educate anyone to be a different person. The, the man need to match with someone that match who he is, whatever he is, but that is the match can match the top billionaires, can match the poor people in the world. They still are at the same match. And yeah. of course, the extremely poor don't marry the extremely rich and vice versa. So we are need to be on the same level. Yeah. But we need to protect ourselves from ourselves. <laughs> Often. That's, a good, that's a good point. <laughs> dear men, dear gentlemen that watching us right now, Sometimes yeah. you have to <laughs> spend time on protecting you from you yes. because sometimes what you want and what you need are not the same thing. Yeah, because often I say, you need to help me to help you. Because if you insist on those uh, non-achievable goals, I cannot make miracles. It doesn't happen. Yes. And you give people estimation of their chances. And not to bring anybody down, but I do the same when I consult people. I just tell them honestly what the chances are. Anybody can, uh, you know, uh, win a lottery, right? It's like one out of how many million or... But it depends well, how much time. Do, do you agree, Alex, that there is, it depends how much time you have? Like if you are in your early, if you are in your early thirties, you might have some more time to play around. But when you are about to to hit some more mature age, does it have something to do with being more cautious? Um, I would say that uh, obviously, time, age. This is all things that we quantify in numbers. Mm -hmm. But I also always say that. Uh, quantity never will be quality so it's like a couple can be extremely happy during 10 years and then one of them die for some reason and other couples can live 35 or 40 years married and they were never really happy make sense so yeah. uh, the numbers are very tricky 
some they are very useful to explain statistics and to understand perspective success or not but they never determine the final result because the final result is in our core is in our soul and uh, we were also when we were in idate and we were listen these people talking about in future matchmaking will come up by an algorithm with computers that in our days they already study when i bored to come back to ukraine i didn't show any document uh, they scanned my face and the computer let me go inside the plane right and when we look to something on internet during a week we are bombarded with things similar because facebook study and knows what you like you know so this will be even more developed with time but one thing makes me happy to know is that whatever will be the uh, the artificial intelligence will never be able to quantify chemistry and if you don't have chemistry you don't have a match if you don't have a match you don't have a wife <laughs> true true that comes from experience that saying right there yeah <laughs> yes so now i'm listening to you alex and i'm thinking so do ukrainian women really play games or or they just come and basically tell you you know the tell you they play, you they, what they want to be <laughs> um, it's not only ukrainian women that play games every woman play games they just have different games according to different cultures mm-hmm. i played monopoly yesterday <laughs> I think that I am not an expert at all with American women but I can understand for the times that I was there that there are also a game that is the game of the numbers it's like who you are where you work what you do how much you win a year so this is numbers game mm-hmm. so you also play the game and if you don't have the meaning to enter the the game you are not even accepted on the table to start the game uh in ukraine the game is more primitive is more as we start our conversation related with uh, beauty and seduction okay is more all times so mm-hmm. is not a hard game it's a uh, fun we, it's a funny game because is the, the game of the seduction okay can cost more money here and there but uh, i listen many times that oh i was scammed i went to this restaurant and she ate like i never ate before and she touched all the dishes and uh, just a bit, a bit and then i spent 300 dollars on a dinner and she almost didn't eat anything so i put the question who was the man that proposed to go there or accept to go there uh-huh so you don't want to get wet don't go to the water right yes i agree ah, okay but i was deceived to go okay is the game why because she is pretty she is charming she could induce but you guy always have the power to say no and if you didn't say no i'm getting red why <laughs> <laughs> then don't cry because oh you dig your own grave you know uh, it's what it is it has a price yes it's it's all very true guys so you got to be mindful and gaining some basic knowledge is helpful actually in one of my uh, uh, video lessons about the dating game i i clearly state that you offer the place you pay for the dinner you offer in a place this is just a little remark and uh yes so if you claim to be this man in power and you, you take pride in being a man feel free to actually follow up with that uh, you will have less chances to be tricked but but is a, is a game that is played uh, by two simultaneously okay it is like is the one that seduced to go to that restaurant and this is the one that accept to pay that bill mhm right. yes so, uh, yeah they, you can look there for a night of dishwashing 
So the, the, the seduction game sometimes, and everybody is happy to pay if they reach what they want. Right, guys? Yeah. We get what we want, we don't cry. But when we do not get what we want, and we realize that we made a dumb bet and we just burned our money and didn't get what we wanted, we need to recognize that her seduction game was smarter than our intelligence. She ate the shit in our brains. So who is the guilty, her or we? Yes, knowledge is power. Exactly, but... I'm not excusing them because they should not do that. I know many people and I, for example, that is one of my rules. First meetings is uh, coffees and cakes. There's no reason for an expensive restaurant for the first meeting because people are there to know each other, not to appreciate the menu of the restaurant mm -hmm. because then they spend a lot of time reading the menu and then they spend lots of time with the uh, mouthful of food and they don't talk so it, it doesn't make sense so uh, the best it's thing like a pre-screening meeting basically when you exactly. pre-screen it's needed uh, people are there because they want to meet people not because they want to eat good food okay yeah and the, the rule number one that uh, i hope that all of those that are listening to me put in your brains doesn't matter how much beautiful she is how much charming how much in love you feel about her. If she touch the subject of money, if she asks something before you met her, even just have the courage to abandon that boat because that boat is sinking and you will drown. He is the wrong person since the very first beginning. Doesn't matter if she's the most pretty in the catalog. He is not for you. Maybe it can be for a guy that doesn't care about money, that can pay whatever. We have restaurants in Kiev that you can spend easy $300 for a plate of a soup. A, mm -hmm. I say again, a plate of vegetable soup costs $300. It's needed to book table to sit there. If you want to go out with these ladies that go there every other day, be my guest. I don't cry. Very true. Oh, what Very the? <laughs> this silence almost scared me now. Yes. No, I kind of dived in into what you just said. <laughs> yeah, it's a reality. We have places in life. Let's keep ourselves in our place, whatever it is our place, without classification that is a plus or a minus, upgraded or downgraded, is our place. We need someone to share our place. So mm -hmm. that someone need to be someone that is an equal, that will enjoy, appreciate our place exactly. because it's all we have to give. And that person does want more than we have to give. So matchmakers, coaching people is to tell you only you are looking to the wrong person or try to find the right person that match what you need. Because if you go by yourself, you are in risk to fail because you go to an unknown terrain, you go to an unknown area, culture, language, whatever. So you are like a fish out of the water. Don't do it. Ask someone to help and it's much more easier. See, the, bad, the, the worst it can happen, you don't succeed, but you don't spend four times the money that you would spend and fail. I agree. And sometimes uh, guys, even having the knowledge that don't do this, don't let you choose a restaurant, you know, don't agree to go shopping. But even with my clients, I consulted the night before, next day is they are in Ukraine. And I had one client in particular, he texted me, he's like, oh my gosh, I just did something so stupid. It was $300 bill and I didn't even have that much cash with me. And, and I just like two, 48 hours ago or so, we just talked and I gave him those, those points. But sometimes you have to have this experience to like really learn. Of course, we hope that we want, you're not going to have the need to have it because you know better and because you understand. But I think one of the reasons this happens 
also because people do not uh, see how compatible they are. The girl that really likes you, she would never do that to you. So sometimes you go so out of your league that these girls, they're just having fun. You know, they just, they, they're thinking inside of them, I feel like, you know, maybe they're not that, <laughs> that kind of people. But also I think that um, they're just fine with it because you, you have your eyes open on what you're doing. And having a pre-screen date and just having some conversations uh, to get to know the person a little bit. You can see if you actually, if you have chemistry or you're just somewhat compatible, you know, because I don't, I cannot see any decent uh, girl that is matching you doing that. This is, you know, these are women that are basically uh, for a different reason there. So what I'm those trying are, to say... Those are the, the women that uh, we were talking before that are not the women that are really marriage-oriented. Because, exactly. it, unfortunately, the, the, the men that come to date abroad, that come here, when we have money in life is when we are old like me, right? Or we were born rich, or, or we get told to have the money. And then we have the money, spend our lives doing that money. But our mindset is still back there on our 30s and 35. So when we now can purchase whatever we want, we, we remind the prototype of the woman that is still back there 15 or 20 years ago. I agree. And then we do not realize that that most likely already passed because it's not on time. What I'm saying with this is like, because we have the car, a million dollars in the bank, a, a house on the beach, and we are not that fat and we feel ourselves very young and very okay. This doesn't mean that the other woman that we like so much and I feel so much attractive that has last 20 years than we have look to us and can see exactly the same as we feel that we are. When they are the opportunity to help a man and a woman on these conditions, to understand each other, I say there are couples that have this age gap and it happens, but is needed to understand that it is possible to put both of them in a healthy contact so they understand who they are. And then the number again is no longer a number and the time coming doesn't matter how old one is, how young the other one is. I agree. No. I think that is a power. Just I'm going to make a last point because it's gonna be, we're going to go into a lot of depth here today. But I think the power of a good matchmaker or dating coach or anybody who deals with relationships is they match you once again, not by the only the looks or age or different parameters that the other person requested, but they're trying to feel both of you and how compatible you could be. We literally had a girl uh, that was a matchmaker from New York, and she was very... Um, aligned with this idea and she shared how sometimes she, she meets people. She just sits on the floor and she has the actual physical pictures of people. She learned, she took time to learn about their personalities and she sits there, she closes her eyes and she, she is feeling who is the match. You know, when you actually took a time to... Um, like she, she put them together and, and she's trying to, to like feel that chemistry because she, she put some time to learn and to talk with people to feel them. This is one thing that when you just work with a, with a picture, you, you don't know the, the actual personality behind it. This is where it takes it on a totally different level, like almost like it's alchemy, magic. I think I think I see this way. I, I think that we all in life are a bit of matchmakers because mm -hmm. we always have the our instinct that says something, that bell yeah. that rings back there in our brain. 
and often that bell is correct but often also we don't want to listen that bell and when we don't listen that bell that subconsciousness uh, that awareness we most likely will incur in a mistake so i i identify myself with that matchmaker and uh, i went to her and i say you are the only person here on this room that i really admire because you match people with a heart not with a pencil and this really we feel and many of my couples that happen when they i start to talk with the man he pops up on my brain the person and normally it doesn't get out from there and they will meet tens of them and they will go back to that one because we cannot avoid nature we try but we cannot so big advice is women are different women are tricky the agencies teach them to be tricky teach them to be deceiving every is a win-win position everybody is making money with the money that you send with the phones that you should not buy and send with the help for the grandmother that is sick and all these lousy <laughs> things that, go, if, yeah. that if you listen to my rule number one, she spoke about money, cut. This is the moment where you save yourself. If you want to pursue, you will be on a struggle all the time. So it's easy to listen to your heart because your heart is always correct. There is no smoke without fire. And most of the people come to me, Alex, I have a doubt because I see smoke. So why do you need me to tell you that if there's a smoke, it's because something is burning? You know as much as me. So, okay, as psychology, towards my work is to oblige you to think consciously what you already know. So yes. sometimes I'm going to say, why you pay someone to remind you what you know? Just sit up, disconnect the, the heart, put the brains to work and be wise. But it's difficult. People need help. It is Between difficult. The fight and the heart and the mind is it's really a, tr a tricky thing. We do need the, yes, I agree. Sometimes we do need some reassurance. So to wrap it up, guys, so <laughs> there are two kinds of Ukrainian women. One are learning the tricks, getting good at the tricks, working with agencies, and they are not on the market anyway. They're just there to go out and have fun, and they have no interest whatsoever. But there is another side of the women that also have a game, but their game is what you want to have, because their, <laughs> their game is to have a man that they can rely on, that could be that would be happy to provide for them that would be happy to spoil them a little bit give them support give them love but from their side they actually interested to provide what you're looking for so <laughs> there's no there's no there's no woman without her own game that's okay? true i told you I played monopoly. <laughs> the question is some women have a healthy game some women have a dirty game yes but all have games. Some games give us pleasure. We feel happy to cover, to close the eyes, to let it go. Other games we are completely swallowing and we just lose and we wake up late. So games, yes. everybody play games. Choose women, the right one. Women go to the internet profile and they lie on, the, on their weight. We go men to the profile and we lie on our age and our income. Everybody lies because it's a virtual world. So if we want to succeed uh, on life, offline, we cannot search her online. Make sense? Yes, it does. I totally agree. We have to make it to that real connection and check out the compatibility. And sometimes the real meeting is better than the one that you've seen online because it's only two dimensional there's no there's no uh, meetings online there are acquaintances online yes. and there are uh, preparation for a personal meeting your personal meeting there's nothing yes and i say again there is nothing 
is just blah, blah, blah. Have you have a chance, have a probability to be someone, but guess what? We need to go there to understand if the probability is real or not. So only then we know if there's a person there for us or not. Online I... is like play games online. It's more funny. <laughs> Don't mess with the heart, just mess with the wallet. Play online dating, mess with the wallet, mess with the heart. Twice evil. <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. I could not say it any better. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, welcome. Anytime. Questions. On bringing people to reason and help them. Yes, we are happy to see when things are working out for all. It's, it's always inspiring. And, you know, we are looking for your feedback. I know uh, some of you are going to uh, write something right away. Sometimes I get feedback later on. But you're always welcome as commenting and asking questions. It can inspire us for more videos. And this one, I want to finish with this. The, the man is hunting for a woman until she catch him. So I hope that whoever catches you is a perfect match. Thank you so much for watching.